Beginning in the spring of 1942, German U-boats attacked American civilian freighters and tankers in the Gulf of Mexico, often within sight of unsuspecting coastal cities and towns in Texas, Florida, and Louisiana. Unprepared for a war that had quickly reached their own shores, American naval and Coast Guard forces sank only one U-boat in the Gulf. A year later, the U-boats were gone, but they left behind the wrecks of 56 American ships. More than 60 years later, a team of archaeologists, biologists, and media professionals journeyed out into the Gulf to study this deadly legacy for the positive purposes of science. Using modern underwater technology, this expert team analyzed six of the wrecks to better understand how time and the natural workings of the sea had transformed sunken metal ships into thriving artificial reefs. Exploring these shattered vessels in depths ranging from 280 to 6,500 feet, this group of government, university, and private industry specialists discovered in this former battlefield a rich underwater laboratory. Moving further out into the Gulf, the Deep Rex mission prepares for the dive on the site of the tanker, the Gulf Pen, which was built in Pennsylvania and owned by the Gulf Oil Company. On May 13, 1942, while transporting 90,000 barrels of gasoline from Port Arthur, Texas to Mobile, Alabama, a torpedo from the U-506 destroyed the ship's engine room. Fatally damaged, the ship quickly sank, taking with her 13 crewmen to a final resting place 1,820 feet below the surface. 25 members of the crew survived. Working its way around the ship, the ROV comes upon a spectacular discovery. Will Schroeder and the research team find walls of coral measuring in some cases up to 20 feet in length on several locations on the ship. This forest of coral is both unexpected and scientifically impressive. Now we're approaching the forward corner of the pilot house and you can see this massive assemblage of coral colonies, literally a vertical thicket, something I've never seen before, growing all over the structure. Uh, we were not expecting anything uh, to this extent at all. We were pleased simply to see the large uh, colonies originally, but to find a beautiful massive structure like this was quite a surprise. They are the largest collection of corals that I've seen at a single location uh, in a vertical profile. They're going up the cables to the masts and it was spectacular. This is, to my knowledge, our first documentation of the corals at this depth on a sunken ship. These are examples of the corals that have been removed from the Gulf Pen. Scientific name is uh, Lophelia pertussa. It's an ahermatypic coral. Uh, it differs from the shallow water corals that you have up uh, on the reefs. Basket has just come up. We've removed this piece of Lophelia by wearing the gloves and all I've protected from contaminating it with any of my tissue and I'm just removing from each one of these polyps as much of the soft fleshy material that I can. I begin to tie together the uh, genetic relationship, the various corals have uh, distribution-wise globally. Following this major find, the mission leaves the Gulf Pen and moves further out into the Gulf to examine the Alcoa Puritan. Lying at 6,500 feet, it is the deepest wreck on the exploration schedule and becomes the deepest archaeological site ever studied in the Gulf. On May 6, 1942, the Alcoa Puritan was carrying a cargo of bauxite, as well as seven passengers who had survived a U-boat attack off the coast of Brazil. Traveling from Trinidad to Mobile, Alabama, the ship was about 130 miles south of its destination when the U-507 fired a torpedo at her and missed. The freighter then attempted to outrun the U-boat, which surfaced and gave chase. Firing more than 50 rounds from its 105-millimeter deck gun, the U-507 destroyed the Alcoa Puritan's steering. Crippled, the ship shut down its engines and the captain gave the order to abandon ship. The U-507 waited until all the passengers and crew were in lifeboats, 
and then sank the Alcoa Puritan with a single torpedo. While there is little visible marine life on this wreck, there are enough invertebrate specimens to warrant additional study. I'm here looking at doing identification of the invertebrates that are on the shipwrecks and comparing the density and taxa of those invertebrates to those that are off the shipwrecks. So these wrecks are creating a, uh, a substrate for the incestual invertebrates to grow on and then those invertebrates create a three-dimensional structure that then fish and the shrimps and other organisms can move into. Rusticle is actually a uh, rusty colored icicle. It's the name, it's a structure. But what it is, is it's actually bacteria. Not bacteria that causes you to get sick, but environmental types of bacteria that work together in sort of a symbiotic relationship. The Alcoa Puritan should have quite a number of rusticles on it, uh, much more than, say, the Robert E. Lee, because it is the deepest. While all the other wrecks visited on the mission are declared war grave sites and cannot be disturbed, the Alcoa Puritan, because all hands successfully abandoned ship, offers the opportunity to retrieve an archaeological artifact for conservation and study. The ROV pilot expertly maneuvers the arm and basket so that one of the U-507's deck gun shells can be returned to the surface. With the retrieval of the shell, all of the mission scientists involved now have video footage, observational notes, artifacts, and specimens for further study that will reveal the lasting scientific legacy of the U-boat war in the Gulf.